Okay, I am Farouk Elbaz. I was born in Egypt in a town called Zagazik. And uh, I was educated also in Egypt with a, with a uh, BS in uh, chemistry and geology. So I started looking at all kinds of things. And here is an ad for uh, NASA that was wanted some geologists to work on the geology of the moon. And they applied and they got accepted. <laughs> what was your job at NASA? So I did. I took found out that there were 2,200 big pictures of the lunar surface. I sat down for three months, looking at each and every one, summarizing what I see. And based on that, I thought, okay, if we want to sample every type of lunar rock, where do we go? I found out that if we go to these 16 places on the moon, we would have sampled every kind of rock on the surface of the moon because we would have sampled every kind of feature on the surface of the moon. I started campaigning for that with my fellow geologists. And then as I, I was big, big, I, be, I became one of them kind of. And that, although I was at headquarters, I would never really uh, stay at the uh, flag staff as well, except for the visits or weekend or something. And so NASA uh, wanted to start a uh, group to select landing sites for the Apollo missions in 1968. Every in 1968, no, 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 in 1967, and late 1967, October 1967. Yeah. And 28 geologists, I was one of them, uh, sat down for two weeks to look at all my lunar surface features and select landing sites. And em with emphasis on the first landing site for the Apollo 11 mission. How did you choose the Apollo 11 landing site? For instance, in, in the first mission, the number one priority was to land on an absolutely flat area. Because this was the first time, we don't know where it is. And the, the lunar surface module cannot land on anything that is more than 12, uh, 12 degrees. If it is tilted more than 12 degrees, the spacecraft will land and will topple over and the astronauts will be dead. So that we had to make absolutely certain that the place we selected to land was absolutely flat. And how do you know that? We don't have topographic maps of the moon. So <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? We don't have stereo pairs. We don't have three-dimensional images. We don't have pictures of the moon. We don't have maps of the moon. So how do we establish that we're, the place we're selecting is absolutely flat, like the horizontal? So it's the only thing that we could do is to say, well, we, we, the pictures we have from the moon, they are based on the sunlight. So, if a surface is like this towards the light directly, so it will be uh, tilted this way. If it is a shadow, it will be tilted this way. If it is grayish or not very bright, it will be flat light. So we measure the brightness of the surface to tell us the potential potentiality of its flatness. This was certainly uh, reasonable, but it was not exact. <laughs> we did not have exact tilts of the surface of the moon. But we did as much as we could, and we certainly started looking at places that are as close to flat as we possibly can. In addition to flat, we had to select places that have absolutely no blocks, so that if the spacecraft lands with the four legs like that, if, if there's a block that is too high, then the spacecraft would, would topple over and the, the, the mission would be lost. Or the astronauts would be dead. You don't want to be there. Selecting a place that, where the astronauts would die and when they land. So we needed to pick up something that is free of blocks. So where are the blocks on the moon? And blocks on the moon occur only because of impacts. Because the lunar surface area that we selected is lava, and lava is flat in its general, in general, from the time it was formed. But when meteorites hit that surface, they make a hole, and the stuff comes out from that hole, and this will be blocks around the crater. Okay. Around the craters would be the larger rocks or the smaller rocks? No, will be the larger rocks because they would not have spread out. Farther on, 
further away from the impact site. So we started all doing all of that and making absolutely certain that the place we select is as flat as we possibly can assume. And it's as far as possible from round craters, that the impact craters, so that it would be as free of blocks as we possibly can. So that was the Apollo 11 mission as flat and free of rocks. And we succeeded in that. Did Apollo 11 land where you planned? Because we're really, we, we, there, there, there was something that we didn't really know happened, that there's two spacecraft are like this in lunar orbit. And then they are separated by a push from the lunar, from the orbit, uh, the uh, lunar orbit, the thing that stayed in orbit. So to push the landing towards the sky. And then there was a push, overestimated push. They, they added a great deal of velocity to it. So instead of going towards where it's supposed to land, it landed farther out. And we didn't know where in the hell it is because they, we started looking at the picture that they took and none of the picture that they took was anywhere near the pictures we saw near the landing site at all. So we went, you know, the, all of the whole geological community was crazed. We had a huge room with about 18 geologists sitting in the back of the, of the room and, and figuring out, trying to figure out because of the, they, we said, we must be able to figure out where they landed from the pictures around the spacecraft. And they started looking at the spacecraft and they tried to, to, to make it fit anything that we, we, we know where they landed and nothing fits, nothing fits. Now, good God, and we keep telling them where did they land during the mission and they can't figure it out at all until the very last time when the astronauts actually left the spacecraft and we moved up and began their journey towards the Earth that we found out exactly where they landed based on detailed pictures of which so it was really crazy that the astronaut landed, they picked up the rocks, they took all kinds of pictures, we saw by television and we did not know at all until they moved out. <laughs> from this place there, that we figured out exactly what they like. Because the velocity was a lot more than what the Houston guys told us it was, and therefore it, the velocity was put them much farther out than where they're supposed to land. What was it like working with the Apollo astronauts? Well, all of the astronauts as a group uh, were assigned to listen to some geological lectures. So geologists from the U.S. Geological Survey that I told you about, the ones that were in this U.S. Geological Survey Division of Astrogeology, prepared lectures and went to the classrooms and put the astronauts in classrooms and talked to them about what we know possibly about the moon and the composition of the lunar rocks and this and that. And it's very unfortunate that astronauts actually hated that. Because they said, we don't need to know any goddamn composition of any of these lunar rocks. You want some goddamn rocks, we'll get them. Do you want some dirt, we'll get you some. But we are not going to have microscopes to look at them and find out what the hell is the composition. We don't care. It's not our business. We want, we're going to fly to the moon and land in the right place and fly back to Earth. 